Hi, how to find contact details when you can't get them from the list broker. Today I'm going to review five great blogs and they've got some really, really practical tips. But I'm going to trump all of them because I have a much better approach. This is how to find contact details. You're going to love it. In B2B, often the best approach is to go to a list broker and if you can get all of the contact details for all of the people, that's a great approach. As long as it's complete enough, that it's a narrow enough search and you're only paying for the names that you want and it's up to date enough. Sometimes it's not. But sometimes we also want something so niche that no list broker is going to be able to provide it. I want people who used to work at IBM or SAP or Oracle, for example, but now work at Cisco. That's a very hard thing for a list broker to pull together. But you can do it and I'll show you how to do it right now. Six basic tips. Upgrade your LinkedIn account to Sales Navigator. Filter LinkedIn's lead builder using, say, industry or company name, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Narrow the role and geography to what you want, but learn how to construct Boolean searches like I want IBM or SAP or Oracle in the past company in the field. Enrich and then import the names into Google Docs and Salesforce.com using Lead IQ. And finally, make sure that your first contact with them delivers more value to them than it does to you. Let me review those sites and then go a bit wild on powerful searching. I've tapped my inner geek for this one and I'm going to have a lot of fun. I hope you do too. Our first blog is How to Find Contact Details Part 2, Pros and Cons from Kenny Hugh. Now, frankly, the best way to think about this article is that he goes through the pros and cons of multiple different paths of finding names. What he calls third party, which I would really call just calling the main switchboard, email, both personal and company, direct number, and finally, mobile phone search. Now, he goes through for each of them the pros and cons, and then finally the best method to approach them. It's a really handy article on practical steps for finding contact details. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, this one's from Tim Seku, and let me give you the short version. What he talks about here is a clever tool called Reportive, and Reportive is a great add-in. So basically, you get a Gmail account, you add Reportive, and what Reportive will then give you is the social media uh, information or details for each of your contacts. Now, what he's found is that you can use it cunningly to iteratively guess at somebody's email address and it won't give the, the social media details until it finds the right address. So a cunning approach to get somebody's right email address by guessing and validating. Next one, really good article. So this is, this is the best of the lot, I believe. Um, this is from Shane McCusker. Thank you, Shane, for your work. Um, I get the impression you've done quite a few really good blogs like this, so thank you so much. Um, it's a really well-constructed video, but it's, again, a very manual process. Now, here's pitching this for researchers or recruiters, excuse me, and they really only want the contact details of a person. And with that, in that context, he does a great job. I do recommend you check this one out. Our next blog is from uh, Wayne Barker, Boom Online, four quick ways to find an email address and other contact details. Good thing that this does is it lets you get multiple, uh, quite a bit of contact information. Um, and I think it's worth checking out, but I would suggest it's not quite as handy as the one from Akuska. The last one I want to check out here is the most shared, um, and that was uh, my two favorite sites for finding contact details by Randy Bailey. Randy, thank you for this. Now, um, why am I sharing this one? It was shared 217 times on LinkedIn, 24 times on Facebook, and 61 times on Twitter. Google Plus 141 times, who to thunk it? So the reason I like this one is it's great for finding contact information and really, again, is for small numbers. Now, the net of all of those is that they're really powerful tools for low volume. So the net of all of that is that there are lots of tools that if you use a few of those tools and some real creativity, you can find fantastic contact details. The problem is that for most of us, we want more contact details. 
you're not after one or two contact details, you might be after hundreds or thousands. And so those tools don't work. But here's what does. Upgrade your LinkedIn account to Sales Navigator and then filter on LinkedIn's lead builder or for industry or company name. Now in a second I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you an example, uh, let me say that in English. I'm going to show you an example of this on LinkedIn. Narrow to the role and geography that you want. Learn how to construct Boolean searches like I want IBM or SAP or Oracle in the current company name. And that's where the, the slightly awkward bit comes in, but I'm going to show you an exact example and I'll give you the, the code that I've used for that. Enrich and then import the names to Google Docs and Salesforce.com using Lead IQ. Again, I'm going to show you how I do that to import all the names and make sure that your first contact with them delivers more value to them than to you. Now, I said that at the top of the show. I'm saying it again now because it's really important. We want more targeted contact rather than more contact. But let me show you the exact steps that I would follow to pull together that particularly peculiar list. All right, we'll start at linkedin.com and I'm going to go to Sales Navigator and I've already mentioned that you need to upgrade to have at least this level of access. Now in Sales Navigator, I have much more powerful search options. Let me just bring up the search variability here and you'll see a couple of things that I want. In this case, I want people who've been, who are currently working at Cisco lock that in. I've got Cisco as the current company and you'll see that these are folk working at Cisco. But I only want people for whom the past company was, now this is where the Boolean search comes in, past not current and what I want to put is IBM or in caps SAP in quotes, or in caps, Oracle, end. Hit enter. And what I'm now pulling up is people who previously have been at, say, IBM, and are now working at Cisco. It's a very specific search, and frankly, I made it up just for this week's show, but you get my point. Now I can start to narrow it by, perhaps I want to take a look at function. I'm only interested in marketers, let's say. So I'm going to keep going until I get down to marketing. There's 172 people who used to work at one of those three big companies and now works at Cisco. I might want seniority level. So I'm going to narrow it down still further. I want managers, of course. Let's say directors, that's fine. Uh, VPs will be great. What else might we add in? Past company we've done. Um, multiple other filters that I can start to apply. Let's go geography as well. I might want to choose, let's say, folk who are only near me. Com country is going to be Australia, just to be parochial, and I want somebody near me in Melbourne. Now I'm going to submit all of that. Nobody. So nobody has worked for IBM, SAP or Oracle who's working in Melbourne who now works at Cisco. And progressively I would release each of my filters. So if I get rid of that postcode limitation, I'm now back to a bigger list. Previously worked at IBM, now works at Cisco. So I hope you found that useful. That level of search functionality requires a few things. It requires the uh, sales navigator at least, requires a little bit of comfort with very basic Boolean search logic, being very precise. And then finally, let's say I've got the people that I want, I now want to add these folk, and you may know if you've used LinkedIn lots that I get 10 at a time. So I take these 10 and I want to add them into my contact database. Click on Lead IQ, and what Lead IQ does is it tells me which of those contact details it can enhance, and frankly, all of them can be enhanced. I can now add all of them, capture the profile, I could add all of those into both Salesforce and into a Google Docs uh, for importing into another tool, if that's my preference. So I'm not gonna do that, 
but that would be the way that I find this very precise search and then I add them in. Now what, what Lead IQ does is it not only captures the details out of LinkedIn, but it also taps into multiple other databases to find email address, to find their address, their social media presences and other really rich data. Now I've got a precise list using quite peculiar search results and fully populated in my CRM. I can go to them with a very targeted message related to something I think they would find useful. So that's it. I hope you learned a lot out of that. I had a lot of fun, but I did it for you because I want you to be able to target very precisely. And I hope that you took a lot of notes as we did that show. Now, if you got value out of that, likely you get value out of our other shows. We do them every week, you probably know that. And for you to be right on top of your game, you need to be the first one to get these. So, best way to do that, subscribe here at funnelvision.com, uh, sorry, mathmarketing.com forward slash blog, and or go to youtube.com forward slash mathmarketing. Here are the URLs here. Now, you can do either of those. If you've already done it, fantastic, you're on top of your game, bring your friends in. The reason I'm asking for that is partly unselfish and partly selfish. The unselfish bit is that if you're getting value, then so will they. The selfish bit is that we go to a lot of effort to produce these every week. Now we do it for you. It's a lot easier for us to do it if there are more people watching these. Now, the volume is increasing really rapidly through your efforts and I wanna thank you for doing that. But please can you share either one of these two URLs or just this particular show with a colleague, invite them to subscribe, I'd be so grateful. Now, if you've done both of those, you've subscribed, you've, you've asked a friend along, last thing you can do, let me know what you'd like me to research and cover for you. I've got a pretty good backlog, but I wanna make sure that what we're spending all this effort on is what you want. So let me know. Send an email to funnelvision at mathmarketing.com and let me know what you would like us to cover, and I'd be pleased to. That's it, lots more lined up for next week already, which I'm looking forward to. Until then, may your funnel be full and always fun. Thanks this week to Stuart Williams for research. For the five contributors, Ken Hugh, Tim Seku, Shane McCusker, Wayne Barker, and finally Randy Bailey, thank you for all of your articles, great work. Thank you for Jason Thea for his amazing production. My name's Hugh McFarlane, and it was my absolute pleasure to script and present this week's show.